Hey guys, what's up? It's Josh. Um, I got another deck profile for you guys. Um, I haven't been on the channel in a while, but uh, we went to up to a Louisville regional. I uh, got my invite with going second spiral. Uh, so I went X2. Uh, I got 20th. Uh, so I wanted to show you guys what I played. So yeah. Uh, and I'll explain everything on the way. I think it's a really good deck. Like, tough and agent are just really good, like cards on their own. But yeah, I'll talk about it as I get into it. So. What do you do with the pieces? Alright, so three, uh, Spiral Super Agent, uh, this is your special summon and it gets you to your combo, so obviously you play three of that. Um, uh, three tough, uh, you're going second, so they're always going to have a card on the field, so what you do is your ideal combo is tough agent. Um, you normal summon yeah, tough, you call whatever, and if you call it right, you destroy something, and that's cool, but it doesn't always happen, but really you just want to see the top card of their deck so you can summon agent, and then go off that way. And like, the deck's just really good, because like, before you even combo off, you have like the potential to pop two cards, just by summoning this, and then summoning this, because this pops a spell trap, and that's like insane, so you're already getting value for like, the combo before you even attempt to do the combo. And then we have uh, the rest of the spiral monsters, just one of one drone, one quick fix, one master plan, one sleeper, one last resort. Um, so this card is, and this card are really good. Um, you can do some Link Karibo shenanigans with this to not die. Um, I did that a few times. Like I literally just sat on this and a Link Karibo for like three or four turns in a row. Uh, yeah, just you don't need more than one sleeper. You don't need more than any one of this. This deck's also good because it's like a small engine. It's like Trick Stars, but better. Because it's just like Trick Stars, where it's a small engine and you can main a lot of other stuff uh, just to combat the metal like hand traps. But the difference between this and Trick Stars is like this actually does something. Because Decode Talker, Sleeper, and then Tough Agent or any 1900 attack monster is exact game. And so let's say you're doing the combo with Tough Agent, pop a card, pop a second card, and then Sleeper's gonna pop two more. And you're probably gonna big red back of this and pop another one. So that's what, five cards? Like before you even attack. So you can get rid of five cards on their board and swing for 8,000 damage directly. And then even if you can't kill them, like Sleeper is just a bitch to get over. So it's like, yeah, it's really good. Okay, so that's all for the Spiral Monsters. I think it's 11, but yeah, okay. So onto the hand traps. Um, we got two Ogre, because uh, I'm running 41, I only had space for two, um, and the deck's pretty tight, like I, I would have ran, there's probably like 45, 46 cards I wanted to run, but I had to get it down to at least 41, so just two Ogre, uh, three Ash, and then three Gamma, and then the Driver, um, so yeah, so I went with three Ash and two Ogre. Because uh, this is better against Pendulum Magicians, but this is better against everything else. And it was Louisville, and like all the Louisville regionals I've been to before have been pretty small and like had a lot of Rogue, so I wanted more coverage for Rogue than I did for uh, uh, Pendulum Magicians. And it worked out because I only played one Pendulum Magician all day. Um, but yeah, Gamma's insane because like it's disruption if you're going second, which you want to be every game. Um, but also, you have a lot of power spells in here that they're going to Ash or Ogre or whatever, and you can just chain Gamma. And if they try to hand trap you and you gamma them and you make an Omega and you take a card out of their hand, they lost two cards and you resolved your effect. So if you ever do that, you should just automatically win the game because you're going to be so ahead on card advantage. So yeah, hand trap lineup. And that's all the monsters, just the spiral engine and hand traps. Um, so onto the spells. Uh, two big red. So uh, you want two of this um, because you actually, hard drawing, it's not bad. Actually, it just becomes an extender, really. And uh, you can, it, it helps you just like stall with uh, quick fix because you can go normal quick fix if that's all you have. Uh, search this, link it off for Link Kribo, uh, activate this, bring back the quick fix, quick fix, search last resort, or you can search drone for next turn, equip last resort to quick fix. And it's, it's just really tough for some decks to get over because it can't be destroyed by battle uh, or card effects or targeted, which is insane. But yeah, you want to because I resolve to a ton of times and going first you just want to see like more extenders like this um and so we only have one resort now but we still play three terraforming to get to it uh so uh the problem with this deck is like the consistency so you like the spiral combo is still insanely powerful but the problem is you only have 11 spiral monsters and out of those 11 you can you really only want to summon 
uh, eight of them. Uh, like, you can, uh, this is okay, like, if you have to be desperate to do the combo, but you don't, you just want to search this and equip it to sleep, or at least two are just impossible to summon if you don't combo. So, like, you really only have eight cards that can get to your combo. So the thing is, if you don't draw two spiral monsters, or two, or one that you can special summon, you really, really need resort. Like, it's still good for consistency, but I play a card, uh, that I'll show you later on, to where if you draw this, it's not even bad. Uh, and we also play one pseudo space. Because we, we don't want to play three terraforming with only one target. So this sucks to draw. Like, this is a brick. But if you get resort, then this card's fantastic. Because it's just a second resort. And yeah, it does banish it. Um, but if you have a way to make an Omega, then you can just Omega, put this back in the graveyard, and then banish it again next turn. And you can just loop it and just get, like, infinite resort activation. So that's nice. Um, yeah, so then we got three Foolish Burial Goods. Uh, this is the best starter extender. You have to run three of this if you're going to run Spiral, 100%. Um, and then we play uh, three targets for it, and then uh, the trap. Uh, so this is a special summon. You banish it to special summon a Spiral from hand, so that's a play starter. This, you banish it to special summon a Spiral from grave, so it's an extender. And then this is the card that I was talking about earlier. So if you draw a resort where you need to use it to get to your combo, and you have this... Uh, this can be an extender by sending these if they disrupt you, so you can get off your combo. But uh, if they don't disrupt you, you can just send this. And this card was clutch. It put in so much work all day. You just banish it, shuffle back the resort, draw a free card, and then you can resolve Master Plan's effect to add uh, the resort and the uh, uh, Spiral Monster to hand, and you should win because you can do 8,000 damage right there and you'll have a sleeper on board. Um, so, real quick, I guess I forgot to mention, uh, I don't run any ravines, which is probably a little weird, um, because if you look at any other uh, spiral lists that have top, like on TCG Player that I've seen anyway, they're all running Dragon Ravine, and I just really hate that card. Like, yeah, it's good, because you can make Ancient Fairy Dragon, so you have more access to this, so technically it is, like, more consistent, um, but I just don't think it's correct, because, like... If you Ravine discard something for cost and they Ogre it or they Ash it, like, you're just fucked. Like, this deck is already inconsistent enough as it is, like, you, you just, you cannot afford to lose those cards out of your hand. Because most likely, unless you see uh, this, 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 or, like, Quick Fix, there's nothing you really want in the graveyard to discard. So, uh, you're just losing cards. You're losing extenders, you're losing play starters. And so, I just really didn't want to lose to one hand trap. Which, and I, it worked out today because, like, I got disrupted a lot, and a lot of times I could actually play through it, so that was cool. Um, then we got some one ofs, one for one, Rhoda, Monster Reborn, Foolish Burial. Um, yeah, so this is a god card. This is just consistency. I stole a couple games with this. Um, when I played the Pendulum uh, Magicians, it was just regular Magicians, not the FTK. But uh, this actually has a great matchup against Pendulum Magicians, and it's one of the reasons that I really wanted to play it. Um, but he ended up making an Omega, and I Ghost Ogred it. And so what happened is I couldn't do my full combo, but I Monster Reborn his Omega back, and then he was I just banished it, and then I just started taking cards out of his hand with Omega and shuffling back uh, my... Ba or not shuffling back, but putting my banished stuff back in the graveyard. Like, I had a quick fix banished. It just gave me so much advantage. So this card's crazy in this deck, because it's an extender, and, you know, it can steal games. Uh, Foolish Burial, Sends, Quick Fix. Uh, yeah, good card. Um, okay, and then two more spells, uh, two scapegoat. So, we all know this card's broken, needs to go to one, or get banned, but, um, so this might seem like a conflict in theory with the deck, and it kind of is, because this deck is just an OTK deck, basically. Like, you want to stun them with a hand trap, and then do your combo and kill them immediately. Because if you go in a grind game, like, Tough and Agent are still really good in grinds, uh, so you can last a little bit. But, like, you really don't want to, you know, like, if you get in a war of attrition, especially with something like True Draco, which is already a bad matchup for this deck, and it's really popular right now, like, you're not gonna win that ever. So, you just want to kill them immediately, and this doesn't do that. But, like I said, in testing, like, when you draw well in this deck, you pretty much win. But you will have hands, because you are playing a lot of brick cards, like, if we just want to go through real quick. That's a brick card, that's a brick card, that's a brick card, uh, that's a brick card. Uh, that's a brick card. That's a brick card. Yeah. So what is that? One, two, three, four, five. That's six brick cards. And these can clog up your hands sometimes. And so when you have hands where you can't do the combo and uh, 
it's you know you're drawing your bricks you want something to protect you to at least where you won't die because a lot of times you'll maybe only have one tough or one agent or one quick fix and that's all you can do is just you know play with those monsters and this like if they try to kill you it could save you because of the tokens but not only that like if they don't kill you you can just activate it and you get a boar load next turn so it can establish some momentum it was pretty good um because like it's kind of like the spiral resort thing uh where if you can't do the combo you need to see resort and it's kind of if you can't do the combo and you can't get to resort you need to see scapegoat so uh, you could cut it though, honestly. Like it was good, but it wasn't amazing because a lot of times I drew it, I didn't even need it. But that's the thing. I thought it was okay. So this was actually my forty-first card. I think I cut an ogre for this and then put this in at forty-one, uh, and it, it was good. But like it's probably it, it's up to preference. You could cut two and then run an upstart to make that more consistent. But I I like the scapegoats. All right, and then we got two traps, two evenly matched, and this is another thing. This was Rageki Dark Hole uh, the night before the event, but I changed it. So when you draw your hands, uh, you'll draw, what you really want is a tough, an agent, or a way to get to them, a hand trap like a gamma, and then two extenders or a breaker card, because you're gonna have six. This is a breaker card. That, uh, so if you draw one of those and like a monster reborn, tough agent, you know, that's a great hand, but you're not gonna draw that all the time. So uh, Rageki Dark Hole are breaker cards as well, but they're not as powerful. So if I saw this breaker card, I wanted it to do enough on its own to where I didn't have to do the full combo. Like, yeah, it takes your battle phase and that sucks, but like, it's just so powerful. And at the very least, even if you only draw like a tough, you can evenly match them, then summon your tough, get rid of their last card that they have. And like, you're still in the game at least because they're gonna be way behind on cards at that point. So yeah, I mean, I think, honestly, this is mandatory, and I, I just like it better than Dark Hole Regeki, even though it uses your battle phase, but yeah, so that's the main uh, 41. Um, all right, so extra, two double helix, of course, because it's your combo. Uh, I got reaper twice today, I think. I, I side Reaper, and it's really weird. The times I got reaper I actually won anyway, and the times I reaper people, uh, I lost. So it, it was really weird today, but... Yeah, two double helix, one link Karibo. This card is so good in this deck. Uh, shout out to Matt for letting me borrow it. Uh, yeah, I, I think I mentioned it earlier, but like there's the combo. You can just normal summon quick fix, search uh, big red, link away into this, big red back the quick fix, and search a drone for next turn, or search last resort to equip the quick, uh, quick fix. Um, and you're not gonna die through that, because this is gonna make a monster's attack zero. Um, and yeah, your quick fix can't be destroyed by battle card effects if you equip the last resort. And this is just really good because you need link ones to be able to make boar load off a of scapegoat. So it's it got a lot of use in this deck. Like this card was one of the MVPs today. Uh, link spider, just cause you need another link one and I don't have another one of these, uh, but you need it to go into boar load off scapegoat. Uh, one ib and one proxy for link twos. Uh, I don't like proxy, I didn't want to run it, but you need it for boar load. Uh, and Ib's just good, like, uh, the best board you can probably make in this deck uses this, and I didn't actually get to do it today, but it's double helix with a firewall with an Ib, so firewall has two bounces and a sleeper next to it and a resort, um, so it's part of that, and it's just, it's an all-around good card, Link 2, that you can go into. Um, <clears throat> Link 3's Gaia Saber, Ningirsu, uh, Decode, so this is what you're going into the most in your combo. Um, because it gets you the 8,000, but if you're playing against Pendulum Magicians, you make this instead, because you don't want to give them the extra zone, unless you know you can kill them immediately, then you can go into this, but if not, go into this. Uh, and then Ningirsu just out stuff. Um, if you have Scapegoat and any normal summonable monster, or any way to get a monster out in the field, you can actually uh, do a uh, draw one play off this, and then you can send a card to Grave to out something they have to. Uh, so that's nice. Uh, but yeah, Ningirsu uh, was pretty good today. Uh, and then Link 4 is just Firewall and Boarload. Um, if I don't think I would play Saryuja, or Saryuja even if I had one. Um, because like if you have the opportunity to go into Saryuja, you, you should have won the game already. Um, but this was really clutch. This stole a game for me. Uh, I was playing as Pure Dino, and I stole his Conductor. And used it to flip his stuff face down. He was really cool, though. Um... He actually should have won that game because I, I had the boar load pointing to his conductor and he summoned another conductor and he ended up kaijuing my boar load 
So when he used his conductor effect to flip my stuff face down, I just changed and flipped his face down, and then I attacked him, you know, next turn for game. Um, because he thought if you attacked into this, I could still take it, but that's not the way it works. So, um, yeah, if he would have kaijued his conductor, he would have had that game. But he was really cool, uh, so shout out to him. But, yeah, Borload stole that game one. Uh, so you got to play it because it just it, – it'll win you games that you shouldn't win. That firewall, I actually never made it today. But, I mean, it comes up. It's a good link for it. All right, and then uh, XZ's Dweller and Tornado Dragon. So right before the event, I couldn't decide between Dweller and Underclock Taker. Um, I had, everybody said Dweller, so I was like, all right, I'll play Dweller. Uh, I made it once today, uh, and it was okay. Um, I was just really scared of True Draco, um, and Tornado Dragon is just an all-around good rank four, especially because like stun decks are kind of popular now, and I just like to have outs to that. Uh, so yeah, they were good. Uh, one Omega to make off of Gamma. This card's actually got an insane amount of utility in this deck. If you can stick one on the board, not only are you going to be up in card advantage at that point because you probably negated a hand trap, but you can shuffle these back as addition and make them additional extenders, like shuffle quick, or not shuffle back, but send it back to the graveyard. Uh, so quick fix becomes, like, you, you can banish it and then just get it right back. So this card's actually insane. And then one Reaper target in the uh, main deck anyway, extra deck, is Electromite. Um... I didn't want to, I didn't really have space for any more, and I just didn't want the Pendulum players to play around Electromite, because if I go in my side deck and they see this sleeve that's completely different from the ones that I have, they're going to know I'm siding in Electromite, and they're going to know I'm siding in Reapers, and they're going to play around it. I didn't want them to do that, so I just left it in, in the main, uh, and it was, I Reapered uh, the Pendulum guy for this game two, and he still beat me, because I bricked, but, you know, whatever. It's good, in theory. And then we got... Four tokens. Okay, and then side real quick I can do. All right, so I got three Reaper. Um, this card's really good in theory. Uh, I only sided it in once today, I think. Yeah, I had I have ABC Buster sided as an additional Reaper target, but I didn't play an ABC. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, if I, I, I think you have to put these in the side deck. <coughs> Excuse me, because it's pretty much an auto win against Pendulums unless you brick. Um, but yeah, Reaper was really good, even though I didn't side it in very much. Um, Raigeki, I didn't want to side this, actually. Like, I mean, it came up today. It helped me out a little bit, but I, I didn't want to side this. I wanted to side two Trap Eaters and a Beals, because uh, what you can do with that is going second against True Draco. Trap Eater, you can send one of their face-up traps to the grave, special summon it, and then if you have any other level four, it becomes Beals, which Draco has a really tough time dealing with. Um, but no one had Trap Eaters before the event, so I was scrambling to find three cards, so this was one of them, but yeah, it, it was okay. It wasn't bad. Uh, and then we play our Spell Trap removal, Two-Tone Twister, and three Cosmic Cyclones, so this was probably, yeah, this was one of the other cards I sided in uh, because I couldn't find the Trap Eaters, but yeah, the Cyclones were good, obviously, and twin, only Two-Tone Twister because, like, discarding is not awful in this deck if you have the right cards in your hand, but you don't want to see, like, three of this, but yeah, they were good. Uh, the third evenly matched, of course, for stun decks, or just true Draco or anything that needed it. Um, a couple going first cards, four of them. Uh, I think this was the third card I sided in uh, because I couldn't find the Trap Eaters and I can't make Beals without it, so that was the third one. Uh, these didn't really do anything. I never needed to side these in because you want to go second against Pendulum anyway, but I mean, they're there just in case. And uh, yeah, so that's the side deck. Uh, yeah, so I mean the main deck like I started off uh, I lost my first round against Mech Knight Invoked uh, Then I ended up playing Percy and I beat him round two But then I lost round three against True Draco, so I felt like shit after the third round because I was already x2 um, But I managed to win the next six I think in a row um, I will say though like I, I didn't 2-0 a lot of people like a lot of games went to game three and I don't think not not because like I misplayed the deck at all. I mean, every now and then I did make a little misplay that I probably could have won the game a little faster. But um, it's just this deck is like it just it, it breaks sometimes. Like because you I, I don't want to be forced to run these cards, but I just have to like just because like sometimes you'll just draw unplayable hands and you have to do this. But I mean, the deck needs a little work definitely but i think this is a really good skeleton to start with if you want to run going second spiral because it just has a really good matchup against rogue because like 1900 beaters that continuously snipe cards away 
is like just really good and so is sleeper that is basically unable to be outed unless they get rid of resort and the last resort unless they have a kaiju so it's just you know it's, it's a really strong deck but yeah so it got me my invite so i'm pretty satisfied with it but uh yeah that's uh that's the the, pro <laughs> the profile <laughs>